So today we're taking a look at Intermountain's A-Line Twin Stack Container Well Car, specifically the Santa Fe Econo Stack. All right, so let's start off with the first car. We got the handrails on the sides, a brake wheel mechanism, and some grab irons down below in the front, a silver walkway on the top, not see-through holes though, as well as labels like do not hump. Down below, we have some air lines going across, surprising amount of detail, and there's quite a bit of text right there, which is actually legible. And here is the bulkhead, which is the main characteristic of the twin stack well car, and it's basically made in the early days of intermodal trains because they weren't sure if the top containers would just fall right off, so they added extra support. All right, so let's move further down the car. Here we have the road number, as well as detail about the capacity, the B for the B car, and then the insides, so there's a bunch of indented circles and some notches in the middle. And on the other side, here we have the Santa Fe logo, and it says Econo Stack, which is the branding trademark for their twin stack container cars, as well as some details on the bottom. All right, so on this end, we have some more piping going across and a little air tank there. So here's what it looks like from above. And you can also check out the Jacobs bogey. So on this end, we have this chain that connects to that little rod and there's a lot of detail. This is actually also separately applied. So it is not just molded on because I saw one part of it. It's a little bit loose. And here you can see the airline. It just continues towards the front, adds another chain and lots of little details that's different. And if we rotate this around, we can see the chain. It connects to that giant wheel right there. All right, so let's pick up this car and see what it looks like on the bottom. There we go, the supports. And here's what it looks like from the top. So these are the intermediate cars, the C, the D, and the E cars. Now, at first glance, they all look the same, but they do have some differences. As you can see on the ends, they are all different. One has a giant pipe, another one has an air tank, while another one has nothing there. Also, this one has two air brake pipes, while the other one just has one. And here's what the other end looks like, and they still have differences between them. You can see the C car does have this giant air brake line going across the side, while the other cars are more plain. Alright, so now let's take a look at the other end car and compare it to the first one that we did. The main difference is the absence of this brake wheel mechanism here on the end. And here's what they look like from the other side, which is pretty similar, but if you look on top, there is an absence of that bar right there. And this car does not have a bogey attached to it. Speaking of bogies, here's how to attach the Jacobs bogies together. So pretty much you just stack it on a pin into the hole and it goes down. And here's what they look like on the side. They're not exactly flat, but I think that might be by design. All right, so let's compare it to my other well cars, the Kato Maxi 4, Ather Maxi 3, Walther's Rebuilt Thrall, and then my A-Line Twin Stack cars. You can see the Twin Stack car is pretty unique compared to everyone else because it has those gigantic bulkheads, which in the modern era, they realized they actually don't need it all, so they just did it without them. It is still cool though, and they do still operate it to this day. And here you can take a look at all the different floor designs designs they have. I think it's pretty fascinating to know that there's actually a lot of variety between these well cars. All right, so I got some new 40 foot containers to go with the intermodal train. So first off, we have Costco Shipping. That stands for China Ocean Shipping Company. Got some Chinese text right there. Some caution striping at the top and the text on the side. And here's what it looks like on the end with the doors. Nice corrugation, lots of little details. Here's it from the other side and the other end, as well as the bottom. And here's another container of the Costco group. This time it's a nice gray and blue livery. And on the other end, here we have the doors. So if you're wondering what it looks like on the inside, here's what it looks like. All right, so next up we have Kai and that stands for Container Applications International. And here we have some writing on the top. So there are some different printed decals depending on which container you get, which is pretty nice. All right, so next up we have some 20 foot containers. We got OOCL, that stands for Orient Overseas Container Line, based in Hong Kong, so it has that Hong Kong flower. And this is the type of packaging that I was expecting the last containers to be. All right, so next up we have Hyundai. It's also known as HMM, which is Hyundai Merchant Marine, and it has nothing to do with the car company. And I already have a 40 foot container version of this. And then we have this teal China shipping container. Here's what it looks like on the door end, how it looks like on the other side and the roof. 
and then the side as well as the bottom which is actually teal as well surprisingly because the other one they just painted it black So now we're going to take a look at One Ocean Network Express, it's a Japanese shipping company and it has this cool magenta livery. Here's a close up of the door and honestly this is actually my container I was looking most forward to. I just love the color. So it does also come in white which is another color that One Ocean Network primarily uses like white and magenta. So you can mix and match these to make your train look more interesting. And then we have this K-Line reefer container that has actually some nice dotted lines going across. Lots of little decals and fun fact the K actually stands for Kawasaki and it is one of the three companies that owns One Ocean Network Express. Anyways here on the side we got Carrier that's the AC company and here's just what the reefer looks like up close. And then we'll move on this side of it it's pretty similar to the other side. And then here we have the door end which is kind of flat compared to the other containers but there is a subtle bump. I also got a One Ocean Network Express reefer as well. And reefer, if you didn't know, that just stands for refrigerated. And here's what it looks like all around. Lots of printed elements all around. And then here we have the AC section of it. Then the other side. And now let's compare the reefer to the regular corrugated version. The color actually varies between the two. The corrugated is more pale, while the reefer is more yellow. Definitely don't get these two mixed up. Another difference I found between them is that the underside of the reefer, it actually doesn't say Walters anywhere at the bottom, while it does show on the corrugated version of it. I found that a little strange, so I checked on my other reefer, the K-Line, and it has the same issue, it's just blank. Another issue I came across was that the reefers, although they would stack together perfectly fine, if I try to stack it with the regular container, it doesn't exactly fit and I just think that's because the mold is slightly different. We can also compare the magenta one to the white one. So there's actually more than just the main color differences. There's actually decal differences as well. You see the triangle is moved in a different place and here's what it looks like on the door end. And then we'll take a look on the other side. They are different here and then this side, it's also different. I wonder what's the meaning behind them.
So for my final thoughts, I think Intermountain's A-Line Twin Stack Well Cars are a great addition to intermodal model trains. They're a lot more detailed than I was expecting with their air brake system with separately applied parts, the notches and the bars, and each car is actually different. I love how the bulkheads look and it could definitely add more variety since modern day intermodal trains still use them to this day, albeit it's rare. The only issues I had with them were the triangular pieces were loose in the box so I had to glue them back on and one of the bogey black pieces kept hitting the switch so I had to remove that. Also this is an out of production model so pretty much the only place you'll find it online is on eBay. But other than that I'm pretty satisfied with it. As for the containers I also bought them from eBay from China so I really wasn't expecting this professional packaging. So usually these containers only came loose in a box. I think they are pretty decently built and detailed and they have a nice variety of brands to fill up a train. As for the Walters containers once I got my lighting up it looks pretty great. I love how the colors look and I chose Walters over Athern's one container since it seems Walters did a more accurate job with the one logo where it matches the prototype more and the O is taller. Athern's is kind of like a square shape and a bit too high up. As for the reefer containers they're using a different mold so it doesn't quite easily fit too well with the regular containers. They also do have some differences since the door handles they face inwards rather than outwards. I found that a little interesting. But yeah that's pretty much it for my unboxing and review. I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do make sure you hit that like button down below. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Are you a fan of the twin stack well cars or not? And if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.